My beloved child, have you noticed the whispers around you lately? It seems like everywhere you go, people are talking, and they're noticing something different about you. It's like a switch has flipped, and you can feel the energy shifting. People are saying you've a new glow, a new vibe, and it's leaving them curious and captivated. But let me tell you, this transformation isn't just about appearances. There's something deeper happening beneath the surface, something powerful brewing within. It's as if the universe is aligning to remind us that we truly lack nothing, and when you step into your true self, the world can't help but take notice. So, what's behind this shift? How can you tap into this energy and experience the same transformation? Stick around, because today we're diving deep into the secrets that will help you unlock your full potential and radiate your own light. Many of you have grown up feeling like the odd one out, like the black sheep, but today's energy is quite the opposite. People are picking up on your dynamic presence, which draws them in positively. I sense that many of you have felt like you didn't fit in, prompting you to work on yourself to better adapt to your surroundings. You're doing an amazing job balancing this adaptation while maintaining your personal power. I'm hearing conversations among the people you date, regardless of gender, where they're saying things like, they're really not like the others here. This isn't about superficial comparisons, it's about how they recognize that they can't treat you like everyone else. Part of this perception stems from your high vibrational energy and strong spiritual protection. People have realized that there are consequences if they mess with you, and that's become a topic of discussion. Additionally, many of you are deeply into manifesting, which gives you the ability to achieve what you desire with ease. If you've been focusing on manifesting, using subliminals, practicing the law of attraction, or simply loving yourself, it's definitely paying off and attracting a lot of attention your way. Some of you may have dealt with players or individuals who typically don't take the time to reflect on their actions. Again, the friends or people around them might be saying things like, you usually act this way, so what is it about this person that makes you want to change? You have a unique energy that inspires others to improve themselves. I believe that part of your purpose in this lifetime is to help others elevate their lives, which has required you to undergo significant upgrades and transformations yourself. There are definitely conversations happening about you, where people are genuinely intrigued but also a bit intimidated. They're wondering how you can come into their lives and suddenly be impossible to forget. This might feel like a continuation of the reading I shared a couple of days ago, but even if you missed it, the message will still resonate. It's clear that individuals from your past, who acted poorly toward you, are now reflecting on their actions. You might often question why you find yourself in certain situations with particular people. Frequently, it's your angels and divine guidance prompting you to cause these individuals to pause and reflect. Your high vibrational energy has the power to make people reassess their behavior, which is why some of you may think you have a good connection with someone, only to see them get triggered and retreat. They're adjusting to the impact your energy has had on their lives. I sense that someone is discussing with others how things have changed since you entered their lives, whether it's their worldview or their interactions with you. Many of you have sparked reflective conversations that challenge their perceptions. You may even call them out, prompting deeper introspection. Unfortunately, some people might react defensively, trying to hurt or provoke you because they feel uncomfortable with the changes you inspire in them. It's frustrating to wonder why those who have mistreated you can't just treat you with the same respect they give others. Keep in mind that these individuals often carry their own issues, and it's not solely about you. Your energy can be so powerful that it intimidates and reveals their true selves, throwing them off balance. I also want to mention that during intimate moments, your energy can significantly influence others. This energy exchange might leave you feeling drained at times, while others could become enamored or even addicted to you. There are situations where you might encounter players or people who are not serious. It's possible that after interacting with you, they start behaving strangely because of the intensity of your energy. People have noticed that you have an almost siren-like quality that captivates others. Initially, they may think they're only physically attracted to you, but as they get to know you, they realize there's something distinctly different about you. The depth of your conversations, the energy you emit, and your reactions set you apart from their previous experiences. 
Someone is discussing this dynamic because they genuinely want to be part of your life, but are confused about the energetic shift and why they feel the way they do. It is time for you to awaken, to let your faith ignite and accelerate the plans I have for you. Release all memories of defeat and guilt, choose to persist and fight each day. Ignore the rumors and negativity of others. Forgive, forget, and keep moving ahead. My words will be your guiding light, and your faith will serve as your sword, helping you carve a path through any obstacles you face. As your provider, I am deeply aware of your situation and your needs. Do not let your current circumstances distress you. Close your eyes and remember my words, allow your mind and heart to be filled with peace and tranquility. Many doors surround you, ready to open. Approach these doors with determination and confidence. I urge you to do this without fear. When you take this step, I will put the right words on your lips. Make the choice today to move forward on your path. Do not let fear hold you back. As you rise and walk, the windows of heaven will open for you, showering you with abundant and genuine blessings. You will receive more than you expect, free from debt and those who would hinder you. As you share, give, and bless others, you will continue to sow and reap. This cycle of abundance will persist every day, month, and year. Return to these words and listen to them until you fully grasp my command. Feed your spirit with my written word and move forward with resolve. Decide to persevere, for I will give you the strength you need to fight. I remind you again, I am your shepherd and your provider. It is true that time does not heal all wounds, but I will heal them without leaving scars. The trials of this life will not define you. Instead, the challenges you face will make you wiser. I will relieve you of painful memories because my hands were nailed to a cross, bearing your suffering and cleansing your guilt with my shed blood. I offer you my grace to lift all burdens and sorrows from your heart, whether in good times or bad, in health or sickness. My presence will never leave you, this is my promise. I understand your needs, and I promise to provide not just what you lack but much more. Declare with your heart and lips that you will continue to fight, live, and believe without fear of distressing news that may alarm you. I have my reasons for all that I do, my power has the final say. I can calm the fiercest winds, part the seas, make you walk on turbulent waters, lift you from pain, heal your body, and grant healing to your soul. I receive your tears when this world brings you pain and suffering. In your faith, you find refuge. You love me and believe in me, my presence surrounds you and manifests within you. Once again, I will fill you completely with love and peace amidst the turmoil. I will perform mighty miracles in your life, showing what is possible when my word is received and obeyed with a humble heart, embracing both trials and blessings equally. There are challenging situations I will transform for your benefit, battles and trials that will lead you to a better place, conflicts that will make you stronger. You will encounter circumstances that will enhance your wisdom. If I allow difficulties, it is for your own good. When I say I will be with you and protect you from evil, I mean it. You will prosper, it is my will that everything good that enters your hands will be multiplied and blessed. Believe this wholeheartedly. Do not let past failures or imperfections become excuses. If you are to fully believe in me, you must also believe in my forgiveness. If you seek complete blessings, ignore the accuser, and do not pay attention to criticism or slander. Do not give a foothold to the envious who seek to ruin your promising future. Instead of giving in to fear and anxiety, feel my hand touching your heart. Be filled with joy, peace, hope, faith, and confidence. I will bring joy to your life and fill your mouth with praise. Your life will change. Your blessings come from heaven. Abundance will grace your home, freeing you from the chains of debt and mistakes that weigh down your finances. It may seem like you are enduring scarcity, but listen to my words and look around with the eyes of faith. Be sensitive to the open doors and opportunities before you. Treat those you meet along your path with kindness, for I will bring many special people into your life. Those who extend their hands to you do so as I do. Be friendly, be kind, and treat everyone with respect for I will bless you and use you in astonishing ways beyond your imagination. I have wondrous things planned for you, especially in times of hardship. 
You will rise and shine amid the darkness. You will be my witness. Let me share a secret. What you are reading and hearing, I reveal to many of my children. Yet, not all believe, and some refuse to accept what I offer, making numerous excuses. They choose to believe those who wish to keep them enslaved in misery, sin, pain, and sadness, dismissing my blessings and promises. But I urge you, love me and believe in me. It is essential to do so, otherwise, you risk losing precious time by hesitating and not accepting the blessings I have for you. I know you are different. I have tested you many times, and I see your belief in me. I love you deeply. Receive my blessing now. You are in my hands, I carry you under my shelter and protect you. Fear not those who rise against you, they will contend with me. Your problems may be many, but I will deliver you. Those who wish to harm you will be ashamed and confounded. You may see them surrounding you, seeking to defeat you, but I will intervene. In just a few days, you will look back and see your enemies no more. Many are angry because they cannot overcome you, not realizing that your greatest friend, your God and Savior, defends you. Have faith and believe in me, nothing is impossible for me. Believe and act, I am with you. Move forward with confidence. I have strengthened your faith and empowered you to walk on water, to fight and defeat any malignant force. You no longer fight alone. You have become brave, leaving fears and anxieties behind. Lift your sword and continue the battle. Prepare for the blessings that are on their way. You will conquer the land before you. I will provide answers and a way out in every situation. I have anointed you with my spirit to heal and encourage many hearts. I will bless your family and bring peace and harmony to your home. Soon, you will feel something different. My presence will reign in your house and all malevolent forces causing distress will flee and never return. Seek me, and you will find rest for your soul in my promises and my word. Your trust should be in me, your God, your rock, your health, your strength, and your salvation. Take my hand firmly, and you will not fall. I am your protector, your Lord, your healer. Declare now with all your might that you believe in me, and cling to your faith in me with all your heart. I love you. I have been, I am, and I will always be with you. I urge you to pray for your family, it is essential. Your prayers are effective and powerful, and you have witnessed many times how I respond when you enter my presence. Your family is facing struggles, and while they may smile outwardly, they are suffering inside. Come before my altar on your knees, begin to intercede and cry out. I will surround your family with a hedge of spiritual protection and will not allow the adversary to assail them. I will deliver them from afflictions and mishaps, instilling wisdom in their hearts. I will unlock doors that were once sealed, revealing numerous opportunities that seemed hidden from them. I will bestow strength, peace, serenity, and inspiration, enabling them to communicate with their loved ones with tenderness ensuring they never speak hurtful words but truly understand the difficult situations others are facing. Tender caresses will rest upon their heads, and as you do this, my blessing will flow from your hands, extracting sorrow from their souls. I will shatter every chain and bring healing to their hearts. Speak my word to them, ensuring they never forget my promises. Let my name be spoken in your home with reverence, and watch as problems gradually fade away allowing my presence to reign in your family. Soon, you will witness with great joy the transformation of their lives, their character will evolve, and many who seemed lost will find their path and reach their blessed destination. So cling to me and do not be disheartened by the negative circumstances you observe. I possess a mighty plan, and it will come to fruition, no one can obstruct it. Yet, there must be someone in your home who believes in me fervently who prays with unwavering faith and devotion, and that someone is you. Pray for your family, and I will eliminate obstacles, granting you victory. I love you and them as well. Rest in me, for I hold your present, your future, and the blessings destined for your life. This is proof that I have chosen you. If you treasure my word and believe in it, those who wish to see you ashamed will be astonished by the supernatural miracles I will perform in your life. I raise your countenance, wipe away your tears, and grant you peace, I will bring happiness into your life. Come and listen to my promises daily. 
Open your Bible, sit in silence, read, and nourish your hungry heart. Grow stronger and feel the immense strength I am infusing within you. Sometimes, you may lift your eyes, hoping for a response from heaven, but now I command you to look forward. I am already answering your prayers and petitions. What you have asked of me, I am granting according to my will. In your home, there must be someone who steadfastly believes in me, prays with all their might, and maintains unwavering faith, and that someone is you. Pray for your family, and I will surround them with my heavenly army. Do not let doubts cloud your mind. I will always love you, your life is in my hands, and I want to help you overcome challenges, conquer discouragement, and focus on the future so you may triumph and prosper. Trust in me as your Heavenly Father, and feel free to speak to me and share your needs, for I want you to perceive me as a great friend. Imagine if you were assured that whatever you did for God's glory would succeed, what would you undertake? Once you identify what that might be, the crucial question then becomes, why aren't you already pursuing it? Fear is often the greatest obstacle, and the Bible frequently reminds us to fear not. Fear can prevent us from following God's calling. To truly grow, we must confront our fears. So, do you value personal growth enough to face your fears, or are you letting your fear of failure keep you from moving forward, even if it means remaining stagnant? Growth inherently involves risk, and risk brings fear. The choice is clear, confront your fear or avoid it and remain passive and stagnant. Often, we seek reassurance and a guarantee that everything will be alright before taking a leap, but God rarely provides that guarantee up front. True growth occurs when we are willing to take a step of faith without certainty. It's about trusting God and moving forward despite the uncertainty. To grow, you must push beyond your comfort zone. The fears you avoid become your boundaries. Think of fear as an invitation to evolve, to expand beyond your current limitations. It's a call to explore new possibilities and to grow in ways you haven't yet experienced. The Holy Spirit is most active when you step outside your familiar zone. You need to confront your fears now, rather than postponing them with promises of, someday, that never seem to materialize. Anything you're hesitant about or reluctant to do often gets deferred indefinitely, but it's essential to act today. God is telling us, you won't live forever. This means that real growth happens at the edge of your comfort zone. I firmly believe that growth always begins where your comfort ends, there's no convincing me otherwise. Every Sunday, I still feel uneasy standing up here, but I push through because growth and faith often lie beyond our comfort zones. Many people, driven by fear, busily stick to what's comfortable to avoid stepping out in faith. So. What would you undertake for God's glory if you knew it would succeed? The only way to find out is to take the leap. When you sense God calling you to something, the only way to confirm it is to act. Naturally, it must align with his word and it helps to seek counsel from fellow believers if you have doubts. But if you find yourself asking, what if it doesn't work, consider this, what if it does? When I was a teenager at camp, I remember standing at the back of the worship service when Coach Bo Lee told me, Boy, when the singing is over, I want you to preach. I was stunned. Preach? In 45 seconds? I asked. Yep, he replied. I told him, Coach, I've only been a Christian for a couple of years and I'm not comfortable speaking in front of people. He retorted, Comfortable? Did you think Daniel was comfortable in the lion's den? Or Paul and Silas in prison? Or Jesus on the cross? What should I talk about? I asked. Coach Lee simply said, talk about Jesus. Talk about John 3 verse 16. Go. So, I did. I preached a sermon on John 3 verse 16, and a lot of kids came to faith. As I left the platform, Coach Lee pointed at me and said, when you teach the Bible, I see two things, you come alive, and they come alive. Then I had to sit down with my dad, who wasn't a believer at the time, and tell him I wasn't going to medical school, I was going to seminary. He asked, what seminary? I explained, it's preacher school. His response was, preacher school? You only work half a day a week and study one book. Why do you need a whole school for that? 
I shrugged and said, I don't know. They make you go. And I went ahead and did it. If you place your trust not in your circumstances, because honestly, who knows how things will turn out, but in him, that's what truly matters. We can't predict the future, right now, we only see things dimly. So how do you figure out what he wants you to do? My approach to understanding God's call is simple, pray, make your best guess, and take action. Pray, guess, and go. When making that guess, it's crucial to stay grounded in God's word and surrounded by his people. Follow what he tells you. In John chapter 3, Jesus compares following God's will to the wind. You can't see the wind itself, only its effects. You don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. You can feel it and observe how it changes things, but you never actually see the wind. It's only when you set sail and let the wind guide you that you experience its power and direction. If you could accomplish anything for the glory of God with the certainty of success, what would it be? Once you have an idea, don't just listen to the word but put it into action. It's time to move beyond merely hearing and start doing. I frequently remind people, especially the younger generation, which growth doesn't happen in comfort, it happens when we're stretched and challenged. Today, I believe this message is for me as well, God is pushing us out of our comfort zones. Scientists and psychologists agree that remaining in comfort zones stifles growth in all areas, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. For example, when an eaglet is developing, the parent eagle removes feathers from the nest to make the eaglet uncomfortable, encouraging it to spread its wings and learn to fly. Similarly, God uses discomfort in our lives to teach us to soar. Growth starts at the edge of your comfort zone. You need to let go of your comfort and be willing to step into the unknown. Success often comes from venturing into discomfort, so embrace the challenge of being uncomfortable. God's call isn't about staying in the familiar. It's about taking bold steps of faith. While he doesn't promise comfort, he does promise the strength to be courageous. Today, I'm here to urge you to step out of your comfort zone, the boat of comfort. God is calling you to move beyond your familiar boundaries. He wants to stretch you, help you grow, and push you to achieve more than you think possible. For some of you, God has given you a vision or dream, perhaps years or even decades ago but you're still clinging to the safety of the boat because it's comfortable. Remember, God doesn't call you without also equipping you with the courage to act. It's time to leave the boat behind and pursue that dream. Just like Peter stepped out of the boat and began walking on water, you too need to take that first step. Some of you might be waiting for God to part the sea before you make your move, but God is saying, step out, and I will part the sea. Faith involves setting bold goals and trusting in a limitless God. It's about committing fully and believing that God is working behind the scenes to make things happen. We're not here to play it safe, we're here to take risks. I've always been drawn to adventures, and I encourage you to ask God for a bold vision, a dream of how you can align your life with his plan to make a significant impact in the world for his glory. Then, go after that dream with everything you've got and witness the results. It's easy to settle into a comfortable life with things that fall short of God's best for us. We know there's more potential within us, but we often hesitate to stretch ourselves or take risks. We worry about what might go wrong. What if the door doesn't open or the plan fails? We can become complacent with negative influences, unhealthy habits, or feelings of self-pity, always focusing on what we've missed or how we're disadvantaged. The danger of staying in our comfort zone is that we miss out on our true destiny. When God is calling you to a higher purpose, there will be a choice to make, comfort or calling. Will you stay where you are, avoiding challenges, discipline, and fear, or will you step out in faith, take a risk, and embrace the call? The decision is yours. If you're never stepping out of your comfort zone, you're not truly growing. Growth requires stretching your faith and pushing beyond your limits. The enemy will always try to convince you of what you can't do, but if you ignore those lies, you'll hear a quiet, encouraging voice that tells you what you can achieve. You might wonder, what if I try and fail? But consider this, what if you try and succeed? What if taking that step of faith elevates you to a new level and reveals abilities you never knew you had? What if you discover you can do things you've never done before, 
Walk in freedom. Lead with confidence. Live a fulfilled life. Don't let the what ifs discourage you from pursuing your destiny. Instead, flip them around. What if God's favor is upon you? What if unexpected opportunities arise? What if you overcome long-standing challenges? The key is to try because if you don't, you'll never know what's possible. Playing it safe offers no rewards. As Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Many of you have the potential to be used in incredible ways, but you hesitate to take the risk. Here's a practical challenge from this parable. Without taking risks for God, there are no rewards from Him. The best things in life come when you step out in faith and embrace the risk of trusting Him. God's greatest works in your life often happen in those moments when you say, I'm terrified to trust you with this, but I'm choosing to step out in faith anyway. If you're never willing to take risks, you won't accomplish much in this world. So rise up, take that risk, make that leap, and take action today. Don't let another day pass without moving forward. We aren't here just to read about others living adventurous lives, we're called to live them ourselves. Think about the irony of our lives, we become content with routines, binge watch TV shows about other people's lives, or play video games about adventures while staying stuck in our own safe zones. We scroll through social media, looking at others' lives instead of living our own. We're meant for adventure, but to embrace the adventure God has for us, we need to shift from routine to risk. Routine can easily become a rut, a series of actions done day in and day out without questioning their purpose or impact. As you approach the end of your life, consider whether you've truly lived the life you were meant to, made the difference you were called to make, and fulfilled your true purpose. We often find ourselves stuck in ruts. When we stay in a routine long enough, it creates a rut, and if we remain in that rut too long, it can become a grave. Many people spend their lives trapped in this mundane cycle, simply existing rather than truly living. But Jesus tells us in John 10 verse 10 that he came to give us life in abundance, not a monotonous, predictable existence. So many of us are conditioned to stay safe, to avoid excitement, and to believe that we should not expect too much. This mindset often seeps into our faith, leading us to think, don't expect too much from God. Just stay safe and stick to the status quo. But living in fear and clinging to the safety of our controlled little world prevents us from stepping into the purpose God has for our lives. Faith requires risk. It means doing things we cannot accomplish on our own, things that require God's intervention. The enemy knows that if he can't take our souls, he can at least make us live safe, keeping us from stepping out in faith and fulfilling God's call on our lives. The Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. If we want to please God, we need to embrace a life of risk and faith. To move forward, we must step out of our comfort zones and stop being content with just reading about other people's adventures. There's a story God wants you to live. What should truly scare us is not taking risks but the regret of reaching the end of our lives and realizing we never stepped out to do what God called us to do. The fear of missing out on our divine purpose and living a life of regret should be our greatest concern. What are you right now? What are you fighting? What are you fighting for? What are you fighting against? We're broken people living in a broken world, which means we're all fighting something. It's just how life works until heaven. For some of you, maybe it's fighting for freedom from things like anxiety, depression, insecurity, loneliness, and self-doubt. For others, maybe you're fighting for a loved one, praying for them to experience freedom, to find Jesus, to experience life change. Some of you might be praying about starting a family, while others are battling to keep one intact, whether it's fighting for your marriage, a dream, or against a difficult diagnosis. Life can be challenging, and it's easy to feel worn out. Sometimes, we get disheartened, frustrated, and tempted to give up, even if only for a little while. We might think, I'm just done. I'm done praying because nothing seems to change. I'm done trusting God because it doesn't feel like he's listening. I'm done believing that he has a plan for me. I'm done trying to obey, to give, to serve, to show up, to invite people to church, to share my faith, my story, or to make a difference in this world. Nothing seems to be going my way. 
I'm done. Have you ever felt like that? I know I have. Paul addressed similar feelings when he wrote to Timothy. Timothy was struggling, feeling overwhelmed and ready to give up. Paul's message to him was clear, stop it. You weren't given a spirit of fear or timidity. The term Paul used actually refers to cowardice. He was telling Timothy, stop acting like a coward. God has equipped you with a fighter's spirit. You have been given a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. To fully experience the plans that God has for you, you need to take a step similar to what I've done. It begins with this, you must fight the good fight. Paul said, I have fought the good fight. So, Timothy, you need to fight the fight too. It won't be easy, but you're capable of it. Fight the fight and finish the race. Paul added, I have fought the fight, and I have finished the race. Understand this, because there is opposition and because you're human, there will be moments when you feel like giving up. But you have the choice to persevere. Many people start strong, but only a few follow through to the end. If you want to embrace all that God has for you, you need to resolve. I know I'll face challenges because I have a warrior spirit within me. I can't control the obstacles that come my way, but I can control whether I give up. I am committed to finishing this race. Remember, do not grow weary in doing good, for at the right time you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. You can't give up. You need to stay the course. The faithful actions we take, even the small, consistent steps over time, have a profound impact. Being diligent in the little things may seem minor, but it's actually a significant part of the journey. Each day, we're in a battle, sometimes just a battle to maintain our sanity. But you must keep fighting. Remember this, victory is always on the other side of a struggle. It's consistently found beyond the fight. As Galatians 6 verse 9 puts it, let us not grow weary in doing good, for at the right time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. It's natural to feel tempted to quit when faced with setbacks or exhaustion, especially when it seems like your efforts go unrecognized or unappreciated. But don't let weariness stop you. Keep pushing forward, even when it's tough, because the reward is always worth the fight. But we persevere because it's the right thing to do. In Galatians 5 verse 7, the Apostle Paul asked the church, You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? If the devil can get you discouraged and keep you in that state, he can prevent you from continuing. That's the real challenge. Theodore Roosevelt once said, Courage is not having the strength to go on. It's going on when you don't have the strength. Even when you feel you don't have the energy to continue, you must keep moving forward. How many times have you told yourself or others, I'm done. I can't keep going. It's easy to become disheartened when things don't progress as quickly as we'd like. But it's crucial to push through, even when the road seems long and challenging. Stay strong and don't lose heart in doing good, because in time, you will reap the rewards if you don't give up. There is a promise of a harvest. So, keep your faith and stay committed. Remember those times when you were absolutely certain that your vision for your life was going to come to fruition. You were unstoppable, determined that nothing or no one would deter you from achieving your goals. It felt like it was already within your grasp. But what happened to that certainty? The Bible reflects this sentiment with a question, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Freedom is the vision I want to live by. Stand firm in this conviction and don't let yourself be burdened again by the weight of old constraints. The message is clear, you were doing so well. Remember who or what caused you to stray from the truth. What changed? This kind of influence doesn't come from the one who called you. You were on the right path, had a clear vision, but then real life intervened. As the famous quote by Mike Tyson goes, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. This quote, from an interview before his fight with Evander Holyfield, is a powerful reminder that adversity is a part of life. The interviewer noted that this insight applies far beyond boxing, to any area of life, whether it's health issues, job losses, poor investments, or everyday frustrations. What truly matters is how you respond to these challenges, not the challenges themselves. We all want to feel like we're making progress, doing well, 
and making a difference. We want to sense that we're moving forward, having an impact, and making strides. That's a natural desire, and it's important to keep that perspective alive as you navigate life's ups and downs. So, what happens next? Life throws its punches. I've mentioned Mike Tyson's quote so many times, including just yesterday during a chat with friends. I said, Mike Tyson's line about fighting resonates so well, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. It's a perfect analogy for life, isn't it? We all have grand plans, but then life hits us hard, and suddenly we're faced with, well, that wasn't part of the plan. What do I do now? In those moments, it's easy to feel like everything is falling apart and consider giving up. But if you look at anyone who has achieved something significant or is pursuing a meaningful goal, you'll find they've all faced their share of setbacks and challenges. The common thread among those who accomplish great things and live abundant lives is their resilience. They all experienced difficulties and were punched in the mouth by life, but they didn't let those setbacks stop them. Instead, they persevered through adversity and kept moving forward. Here's what you won't find on the list of keys to success. A life free of challenges, a perfectly rigid plan that always went as expected without needing any flexibility or adaptation. Does anyone actually achieve success this way? Does anyone succeed by making excuses, blaming others, and playing the victim while rarely following through on their commitments? Is anyone's story about everyone in their life always agreeing with them and supporting them without exception? Or is it about achieving everything solo, without any help? No one who lives a significant life has avoided the walls of reality, where things don't go as planned, and they had to adjust their strategies. Everyone has faced moments of disappointment and had to overcome blame and excuses. What sets apart those who achieve greatness and find true fulfillment from those who often feel empty is their perseverance. It's their determination to keep pushing forward, their grit to see things through, and their refusal to give up. This relentless drive and willingness to adapt and persist, despite obstacles, is what truly makes the difference between the average and the extraordinary. Pastor Craig often illustrates this with a powerful story about a donkey that fell into a pit. As people walked by and saw the situation, they decided that there was no way to rescue the donkey, so they thought, let's just bury him and make it quick. They started shoveling dirt into the pit. Each time a shovelful of dirt landed on the donkey, he would shake it off and step up. More dirt came, and he shook it off and stepped up again. It might have been the 1,000th or 10,000th shovelful, but eventually, the pit became shallower and shallower until the donkey was able to walk out. This story shows the importance of resilience. No matter how tough things get, whether you're facing financial troubles, health issues, or family problems, you need to shake it off and keep moving forward. It's not the time to quit or complain. Even when you're down, remember that we serve a God who specializes in comebacks. Quitting is easy, and that's why many people do it. But you are not one of those people. Micah 7 verse 8 reminds us, Rejoice not over me, O my enemy, for when I fall, I shall arise. You might get knocked down, but it's not the end. God will never declare it's over until you win. Proverbs 24 verse 16 says, A righteous man falls seven times but rises again. To overcome the devil, you only need to get up one more time than you've been knocked down. Keep getting up and never quit. The pain of giving up and the regret that follows is far greater than the pain of perseverance. God promises rewards for those who endure. The key is to keep showing up. You cannot keep a person down who refuses to stay down. It's one thing to be knocked down, but the real challenge is to refuse to remain down. There are people here who can testify that, although they've been knocked down, God continually provides the strength, energy, and power to get back up. Every time something or someone has brought them down, God has lifted them up again. Life isn't about avoiding being knocked down, it's about refusing to stay down. You've come too far to give up now. You need to keep fighting because, in His name, there is nothing you can't overcome. If you're feeling like giving up, I understand that temptation, but don't do it. Remember, God is on your side, just as he told Peter he was praying for him so that his faith would remain strong. Let God be your source of encouragement. 
He is in your corner, and with his support, you will emerge victorious. Have you ever felt the tranquility of early morning when the world is hushed and the day brims with potential? This moment, so serene and pregnant with promise, resembles commencing our day with prayer. Just as the dawn's light begins to blanket the sky, dispelling darkness, initiating our day with God illuminates our path, guiding us through whatever lies ahead. Prioritizing prayer as the first action of our day isn't just about the words we utter. It's about forging a connection with our Creator. It's about offering our time, thoughts, and hearts to Him before anything else. Today, we delve into the significance of making prayer the inaugural act of our day, exploring how this simple yet profound practice can influence the course of our day, impact our mood, and shape our interactions with others. When we start our day with prayer, we declare to God, You are the most important part of my day. This act of prioritizing God sets the tone for everything that follows, affirming our faith and trust in Him. It's a practice that not only strengthens our faith, but also enriches our daily lives, infusing them with peace, joy, and purpose. Commencing each morning with conversation with God is more than just a ritual. It's a lifeline, anchoring our souls in the certainty of His love and promises. It establishes a precedent for the rest of the day, offering a perspective aligned with God's will and brimming with hope. Morning prayer isn't merely a routine. It's an act of faith, believing that God hears us, cares for us, and is actively involved in our lives. It's an expression of our dependence on Him, acknowledging that we need His wisdom and strength to navigate the day. Moreover, starting our day with God empowers us to embody the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These qualities become more evident in our lives when we spend time with God each morning, enriching our relationships and allowing us to become vessels of His love. Morning prayer equips us with wisdom for the day's decisions, guiding us in both major choices and everyday matters. It sets a rhythm of communion with God that can continue throughout the day, transforming ordinary moments into opportunities to experience His presence and work in our lives. The practice of starting our day with God through prayer is a journey of faith, trust, and surrender. It promises not just a good day, but a God-centered life, rich in peace, purpose, and joy. Let's commit to making prayer the first action of our day, inviting God's presence into every moment and allowing His will to shape our lives. Morning prayer reminds us that true peace is found in the presence of God. Let us, therefore, cherish these early moments with God, allowing His peace to fill us and flow through us. May it be a guiding light throughout our day, a reminder of God's constant presence and unwavering love. In doing so, we not only enrich our own lives, but also extend this peace to those around us, creating ripples of God's love in a world in desperate need of His peace. Embarking on each new day with morning prayer not only immerses us in peace, but also fortifies us with a strength that is not our own. This strength, bestowed upon us by the Almighty, is a testament to the power that lies in beginning our day rooted in divine communion. It is a strength that surpasses physical capabilities, nurturing our inner resilience and empowering us to face life's challenges with courage and determination. This divine strength is a promise from God to those who seek Him, as vividly captured in Isaiah 40 verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Morning prayer is our act of waiting on the Lord, of dedicating the first fruits of our day to Him. And in return, He renews our strength, equipping us to soar above the trials and tribulations of life. The strength we gain from starting our day in God's presence goes beyond mere endurance. It transforms our perspective on adversity. Challenges become opportunities to witness God's power at work in our lives. Trials become platforms for His grace to be displayed, and weaknesses become conduits for His strength to be perfected. This strength enables us to persevere with joy, knowing that our victory is secured in Christ. Furthermore, the strength derived from morning prayer infuses our faith with vitality. It anchors us in the truth of God's word and promises, fortifying our trust in Him. In moments of doubt or fear, the remembrance of our morning encounters with God serves as a beacon of hope, reminding us of His faithfulness and the unshakable foundation upon which our lives are built. Also, the strength we receive from morning prayer prepares us for spiritual warfare. 
armed with the full armor of God, we can stand against the schemes of the enemy, secure in the knowledge that the battle belongs to the Lord. Our morning prayers act as a declaration of our dependence on God, activating His power and protection over our lives. In essence, the strength gained from our daily communion with God is multifaceted, touching every area of our lives. It is a strength that does not boast in its own might, but in the power of the one who promises to be our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. As we continue to prioritize morning prayer, let us do so with the expectation of being filled anew with God's indomitable strength, ready to face whatever the day may hold with confidence and grace. In the scriptures, we find compelling stories of individuals whose lives were profoundly shaped by their commitment to putting prayer first. These biblical characters offer us timeless examples of how starting the day with God can lead to divine guidance, protection, and empowerment in fulfilling God's purposes. Their stories encourage us to make prayer the first action of our day, trusting that like them, we will experience God's guidance, protection, and empowerment to fulfill our divine calling. As we follow in their footsteps, let us remember that our prayers, whether in times of joy, uncertainty, or distress, are always heard by a God who is intimately involved in the details of our lives. Let us first seek God in prayer, laying the foundation of our journey in His presence. This divine attentiveness assures us of His unwavering support and guidance. It beckons us to approach Him with confidence, knowing that each prayer plants the seeds for miracles yet unseen. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I come before you in awe of your majesty and grace. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Your power is infinite, your wisdom beyond understanding, and your love for us everlasting. You are worthy of all honor, all glory, and all praise. I thank you, Lord, for the gift of life and for your mercies that are new every morning. We are thankful for this new day, a fresh opportunity to experience your love, to walk in your ways, and to reflect your light to those around us. Thank you for your faithfulness and for your unfailing love that surrounds me and my loved ones. Lord, I am grateful for your daily provisions and blessings. In your presence, there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Merciful Father, I acknowledge my sins before you and ask for your forgiveness. I also choose to forgive those who have trespassed against me, releasing any bitterness or resentment, for you have called us to live in freedom and peace. Lord, I come to you seeking to start each day in your presence, to lay the foundation of my day upon your word and prayer. Help me to seek you first, trusting that all I need will be added unto me, as you have promised. I ask that you would guide my steps, direct my paths, and fill me with your wisdom. In the name of Jesus, I declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I rebuke and bind every plan of the enemy to disrupt my peace, steal my joy, or derail my purpose. In the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of confusion, fear, worry, anxiety, and discouragement. Father, I ask for your protection over me and my loved ones. Shield us from the attacks of the enemy and surround us with your angels. I ask for your healing hand upon us, believing for restoration and strength in our bodies. Lord, bless us in our coming and going, and let your blessings and favor rest upon us as we walk through this day. Let us be vessels of your love and grace to others. As I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement as we pray for each other, asking for your Holy Spirit to fill us afresh, to empower us to live lives that glorify you. Guide us, Lord, in your wisdom. Protect us in your strength. Heal us in your mercy and bless us with your abundance. We claim victory over every challenge, declare healing over every illness, and give thanks for your provision and protection. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth and in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those who are lost. God loves you. 
It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer. I pray, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. Then, I encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comment section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.